Welcome back everyone to another episode of ASEAN News with me, Vanessa. Timor is ambassador guaranteed to work hard for Timor-Leste to have opportunities in human resources development. Timor-Leste's ambassador to Brazil, Olimpio Miranda Branco, clarifies that Brazil had supported Timor-Leste in numerous ways, such as providing Timor resources training as well as other fields. Branco also promised to make efforts of continuing strengthening cooperation that have existed between Timor-Leste and Brazil. We bolster up the institutional cooperation and the relationship with Brazil in several various areas, such as police, defense, public defenders, professional training for Timor-Leste, and also prospectively focus on how Timor-Leste befoot self-sufficiency so we don't have to rely heavily on imports from abroad. Mais by importação israelior. Branco highlighted that as Lula elected as the Brazilian president, there is hope to further consolidate existing cooperation of both countries, and Brazil will continue to assist Timor-Leste in various fields. Branco acknowledged that, to date, both countries' cooperation ineffectively rendered by COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, everything has returned to normal, as it will facilitate all the tasks easily. Japan will recruit Timorese worker to work in Japan. Kimura Tetsuya, the Japanese ambassador to Timor-Leste, informs the Timorese president, Jose Ramos Horta, about Japanese government plan to recruit five young Timorese to work in Japan's agro-industrial areas. Kimura Tetsuya said the five young people not only work, they will also improve their ability and skills, especially in technology area, then it can be applied in Timor-Leste in the future. Mr. President uh, has very kindly received me and the delegation from the uh, Kochi Prefecture. And uh, as you may be aware of it, uh, Japan and the Timor Leste at the governmental level uh, has been negotiating on the MOC uh, to promote the technical uh, intern training program. It, this program aims to uh, invite young Timorese to Japan to work in a, a company, for example, in the agriculture sector, by receiving the salary from the company, while they uh, acknowledge and gain the technology, technique, and experiences and knowledge uh, from the uh, company, so that uh, they can contribute to the development of Timor Leste in the future after returning. The Kochi Cooperation Group has met with Safope, including the Japanese ambassador in Timor Leste, to establish the Japanese language course because of the important criteria is to understand the Japanese language. Meanwhile, President Jose Ramazorta agreed with the program because it can help both countries. Furthermore, if the Japanese industry requires workers, Timor Leste will be able to provide. Indonesian workers protest in Martin's job decree against government. Hundreds of Indonesian workers in Jakarta protested an emergency regulation that will replace a controversial jobs law being discussed in parliament. Burning an effigy representing the jobs creation law, which was passed in 2020, protesters gave speeches and chanted slogans outside the Parliament House, urging lawmakers to reject the emergency regulation. <laughs> Officially called a government regulation in lieu of law, some legal experts see the decree as a government ploy to bypass proper debate in Parliament. President Joko Widodo announced that the emergency decree to replace the 2020 jobs creation law that the Constitutional Court had ruled was flawed due to a lack of public consultation. <laughs> the jobs creation law revised more than 70 other laws and was loaded by foreign investors for streamlining business rules in Southeast Asia's largest economy, but was controversial because it was seen as hurting labor's rights, eroding environmental protection. Parliament is expected to vote on whether to make the emergency regulation a permanent law sometime after it returns from the seas. Indonesia's LGBT community fears threat posed by new law. Ada. 
in a small rented room nestled with narrow alleyways in a Jakarta slum, Eva, a 45-year-old transgender Indonesian busker, carefully applies makeup on her face. Assigned male at birth, Eva identifies as female and says the country's new criminal code banning sex outside marriage fills her with dread every day. Last month, the world's largest Muslim-majority country and its third-largest democracy banned people from having sex outside marriage or even living together at the risk of prison time. Civil society groups have slammed the new laws, saying the changes constitute a huge democratic setback and pose a particular risk on LGBT people who could be disproportionately impacted by the so-called morality clauses. Chika, 28, another transgender woman, who also is a busker by trade, commutes to her preferred spot in a nearby town every day. Every time she leaves her house, she worries about being caught living with her partner. Itu sempat drop aku, sempat kepikiran shock juga kan. Government officials have said the hope police rates and finger pointing by moral crusaders would be prevented by the limitations on who is allowed to report a possible offense. An official told Reuters, Indonesia's National Commission on Human Rights would oversee the course of a new criminal code and has made three recommendations to ensure the laws are non-discriminatory and adhere to human rights. Officials of the law ministry did not respond to the fresh request for comment. Rights group Aris Asian Chair Indonesia to act on Myanmar. A rights group urged Indonesia to step up and act on Myanmar crisis as chair of the ASEAN in 2023. The theme of this year's World Report is really about presenting a new model for global leadership in the world and that all governments, big and small, have a responsibility to stand up and protect rights both within and across country borders. This is an opportunity for Indonesia to step up we see Indonesia keen to play a greater role in world affairs, successfully chairing the G20 last year. And this year, we urge Indonesia to use the ASEAN chairmanship effectively to resolve the crisis in Myanmar. But more importantly, I think it's also critical that there has to be a, a recognition that these people are going to continue to come out until there's a solution for the problems that exist in Myanmar and in Bangladesh. Uh, as Elaine said very clearly, these Rohingya, they want to go home, but they want to return in dignity with rights. They want their land back. They want to be protected. You know, of course, they, they faced crimes against humanity and, and acts of genocide uh, you know, when they were forced out of the country in 2017. They're not going to willingly go back into the clutches of the Myanmar military without some sort of protection. In its annual World Report, Human Rights Watch also voiced concerns about the increasing fighting between the Myanmar military and Arakan Army ethnic armed group in Rakhine state that has spilled across the border, which is said will endanger Rohingya refugees and Bangladesh civilians. Many Rohingya have for years fled to the neighboring states such as Thailand, Bangladesh, Muslim-majority Malaysia and Indonesia. Nearly one million Rohingya lived in the crowded conditions in Bangladesh, including many of the hundreds of thousands who fled a deadly crackdown in 2017 by Myanmar's military, which denies committing crimes against humanity. Indonesia rescues 43 endangered sea turtles from poachers. Authorities on the Indonesian island of Bali said they rescued 43 endangered green sea turtles during a routine navy operation where they stumbled across poachers out at sea. The Solonia Midas, a green turtle species, is protected in Indonesia were brought to a naval base and were being looked after by wildlife officials who will later release them back into the wild. This is the success of joint naval base team such that we can save about 43 green turtles alive and well. Indonesia has become a hub of international trafficking of marine turtles, feeding demand from countries like Malaysia, Vietnam and China. The population of green turtles, one of the largest sea turtles, has been on significant decline in recent years due to hunting, loss of beach nesting sites and getting caught in fishing gear. They are also victims of the world's growing ocean plastics crisis as they die after ingesting large amounts of plastics.
The Nobel laureate body knew that Kissinger's 1973 deal with Vietnam is unlikely to bring peace documents. The 1973 Nobel Peace Prize to top United States diplomat Henry Henry Kissinger and North Vietnam's Le Duc Tho, among the most disputed in the world's history, was giving the full knowledge that the Vietnam War was unlikely to end anytime soon, newly released paper show. Nominations to the Peace Prize remain secret for 15 years. On January 1st, documents about the prize awarded to Kissinger and Hanoi's chief negotiator were made available on request. The decision shocked many, at the time as Kissinger, the United States National Security Advisor and Secretary of State under President Richard Nixon, played a major role in United States military strategy in the final stages of the 1955-75 Vietnam conflict. I'm even more surprised than I was at the time that the committee could come to such a bad decision. Kissinger and Thau reached the January 1973 Paris Peace Accords, under which Washington completed a military withdrawal from South Vietnam after having largely ended offensives and avoided combat against the Communist North in the face of the worsening troop morale and huge anti-war protests in America. The war raged on with the North's forces rapidly advancing in the South, now left to fight without critical United States support and weakened by high-level state corruption and disarray. Australia Prime Minister pushes defense ties on Papua New Guinea visit. Australia's Prime Minister Anthony Albanese urged Papua New Guinea to deepen defense ties in an address to its parliament, the first foreign leaders to address the Pacific nation's parliament. Albanese said Australia and PNG are two big Pacific Ocean states and must work together equals to build a more secure region. This can be a decisive decade for peace, prosperity, unity and security in the Indo-Pacific. As two big Pacific Ocean states, Australia and PNG must work as equals with our fellow Pacific states to build a stronger, safer, more secure region. All of us have a part to play in realising that vision. In the years ahead, Australia and Papua New Guinea have a chance to honour our shared history of service in the cause of peace by adding to it. Deepening our defence ties and enhancing our national security cooperation and achieving a swift conclusion to negotiations on a bilateral security treaty. A treaty that will underpin our work together to address PNG's priority needs, including law and order challenges, strengthening the justice system and strengthening the rule of law. A treaty based on deep trust and a treaty that builds on the family first approach to regional security. Albanese said a security treaty will be based on deep trust and address PNG's priorities of the law and order challenges strengthening the justice system and rule of law. PNG, which gained independence from Australia in 1975, is resource-rich but largely undeveloped and Prime Minister James Marape has pledged to double gross domestic product by 2029 through five new gas and mining projects. South Korean and United States Army hold joint drills amid tensions with North Korea. An elite South Korean Army unit conducted a joint military drill with the United States Army at the training field in Paju, located near the inter-Korean border amid heightened tensions with the North. Um, I think as we've seen in recent events that um, the striker is very well suited to fight in the complex urban terrain and the complex um, rugged terrain that exists here on the Korean Peninsula. Because of our uh, rapid maneuverability that we have as a wheel platform, we can deploy quickly to any area of operations within the peninsula in a very short period of time. Okay, right now, oh, there, there are too many, there is not many. 
The South Korean Army, in a statement, said the drill was planned to share warfighting skills between the two countries and improve joint military operations and readiness among the combined defenses is needed after North Korea's recent consecutive provocations. About 800 military officers were mobilized for the drill, which involves the Army Tiger Brigade, an elite South Korean unit armed with artificial intelligence technology and the latest weapon systems, and the United States Striker Brigade, a mechanized infantry company. North Korea fired an unprecedented number of missiles in 2022 and has continued with tests in 2023, pressing on with the development of weapons amid speculation it will test a nuclear warhead for the seventh time. China urges the United States, Japan to stop damaging rights and interests of Chinese enterprises. Chinese Foreign Minister said China will resolutely safeguard its interest in respond to United States, Japan and Netherlands meeting in Washington to discuss China cheap export curbs. This not only damages the legitimate rights and interests of Chinese enterprises, but also will damage the stability of the global industrial chain supply chain. China will pay close attention to the relevant trends and resolutely safeguard its own interest. We hope that the countries concerned will distinguish between right and wrong and work together to safeguard a multilateral trading system and maintaining the stability of the supply chain of global industries is also to safeguard their own long-term interest. The Biden administration in October 2022 published a sweeping set of export controls, including measures tightly restricting Chinese access to the United States chip-making technology as part of a bid to slow Beijing's technology and military advances. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a nice day, and bye.